Hello, buddies. How are you doing? This will be a short video about giving you some inking tips if you are working on small and common sheet of papers, like this one. For example, right now I made a sketch and pencil of a, a page on pencil with 0 0.3, 0 2 millimeters, 5 millimeters, whatever. And then when I'm doing the inking, uh, I will not try to do it on the sheet of paper because this type of sheet of paper, if you erase, whatever, you will not have the, the line width, the precision of the line that you wish for then later digitalize and working on digital. So I made here an example. What, I'm, what I, I use for inking is I try to go as much as possible some details on pencil, on the sheet of paper, and then I work with a 90, 90 grams tracing paper that I put over the, the I use those, these clips for fixing two, the two pages together. And uh, I, <coughs> I work straight up with ink because I don't want also to erase too much. The if I do pencil again on the tracing paper and then ink and erase, you will lose some of the glossy and the, the, the darker line of the of the ink. The type of ink I'm using here is as I always show you, it's one of the best ink. An affordable ink that you could have is the Rotary Ink India Ink. It's a India Ink special. It's not India Ink. It's better than India Ink. It's a, a ink designed for this type of technical pens. And those technical pens were designed to work with that uh, very dark, shiny uh, ink. That's an ink that dries very fast. And those pens used mostly by architects and engineers are designed to work with that ink over tracing paper most of the time. So you are inking with the correct materials, which is tracing paper, rotring isograph pens, and rotring ink. Also, uh, you have to calibrate the type of, remember that HB, if you use an HB on a normal sheet of paper, it will be a lot more, uh, it will be like a B on a dry tracing paper and so on. You have to de-scale the, the type of lead you are using on your um, pencils. Also for inking, uh, you don't want to be like, uh, Dipping, dipping the uh, 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 liner or a very thin brush pen onto the bottle. You can use what I you can use the the cocoiro. Cocoiro is is this. This is a modified cocoiro. Now I'm replacing the tip because. I've been using like two years, two years using this very, it's very cheap, but it's also very thin line. Uh, just pierce the end of it, fill it with rotary ink and put a cap that I use it from a, a Lamy cartridge that I cut it and I fill it like this and pressure it go perfectly. Uh, now I replace it. When you replace it, this one is fill it with cocoiro ink, I will first use it and then replace it with rotting ink, which works better than the cocoiro ink. Um, this one, the point is more sharper, it's new. I think that I will use it maybe uh, until the end of the graphic novel. I have 80, 90 pages left, but I can do like 200 pages with this one <laughs> if you take care of it. And for the thinner lines, I use the 0 
And if I want to do some details like uh, shading, etc., but most of those details now nowadays, um, I'm doing it on Inkin when I send the page to my coworker the color, so he doesn't have to do it on digital, and she he, she just put the colors on it, and uh, somehow the my my tracing work, my uh, hashing work, give the most of the the shadows. But when I'm doing the coloring, I um, the pages that I might color myself, like the one that I show in the last video, I do not apply too much because I do it straight on the on digital. Also, I rework it on digital because I can zoom in, etc. So this type of isograph pen, you have to be really careful with them. Uh, because they tend to clock if you are not using them every day. To unclock it, you just hear that sound. It should be sounding like that. If they don't sound exactly like that, also always put a hand or something on paper because they tend to drop some ink. Another specialized tool that will you you see on my, many of my videos are uh, the things. This is a A specialized font and pen that work with uh, Rotring Ink or India Ink. You can put the names of the pens, and you can put here a cartridge with, with the ink, and via capillarity it will work. It's amazing. It's but you have to also, as every drawing tool, you have to be very clean with them, clean them after you use it for not rusting them with the, the water or whatever product the, the ink has on the nib and avoid cloaking if you are not using every day, etc. Uh, this is more for line width variations. Also, you can fake the line width variation if you're not using a brush pen, etc. with the, the rotary drawing up above the the, that's it. Right now, um, with the, the coil, this one is new, so you can see I can do some very thin lines for a brush pen. They're very thin. This is amazing because most of the brush pen you will get will not allow you to do such a, a thin line most if you are working on small page. I work nowadays on small pages and not the big ones, professional comic book pages that you see on Marvel, DC Comics, because now with the capacity of doing digital drawings on a Surface Pro, whatever, you can zoom in, so you don't need uh, to do all that inking work on a huge paper. This is more affordable, more practical. You can work if you zoom in with a tablet, uh, any other technological device. This draw can be like this size or more. So uh, comic book artists used to, to draw on large paper because they could do some uh, a lot more of details and when they printed they printed always in a size smaller than the one they draw it so you could see like more pixels or whatever in details what you you were, you were doing so but most of the time i'm using the 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 cocoiro for applying the the places where I I need uh, a larger a larger uh, line width and and then I work the the other things as you can see in a few minutes with the 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 road rings. 
now and uh, I will do more videos about those kind of tips so it's more useful for you than just watching me drawing and because if you just draw I would be in silence and be may maybe kind of boring for those kind of videos where I'm just drawing I will do it on fast motion so To get thinner lines on this type of tool, you need to like approach the the brush and regulate the pressure, like almost as if you were not touching the the, the surface. That's why you need to work on a surface that is not so absorbent because the ink will just splatter, and you don't want that. Also, when you are tracing, do not just trace exactly what you have drawn, but it's a good opportunity to improve the, the trace. You can like rework always it's good to make some continuous line, but also in doubt, you should do like some geometrical draws. So we'll go for straight lines, we'll go for straight lines. That, that will help you a lot more in the definition of what you are drawing. So I always do some marks because when the to always put again the tracing paper exactly in the position where it has to be. There's something common that you are tracing and the sheet of paper from below moves and you start tracing another thing and then thing doesn't match up. So it's good to be able to have uh, some indication, like a cross or something that you know that when that thing is just put it there, you you are on the same position. Okay, now that we have most of the fit traces the the main the main lines, you can move to a zero point five that is like a continuation. This one will be your workhorse. Um, the technical pens have a cartridge, you fill it with rotary ink, you can use a syringe for filling it. You put it on, they drop some ink clean, and then you can use it. They are very clean instrument, but uh, if you are maybe not using it for some period of time, remember to unplug it and clean it with water etc. And if they clock, because most of the time they clock, what I do is just, I have, this is my recommendation for you, because it will break if you try to disassemble. You can disassemble and take the, the, the nib that is inside, but that's not the correct way of killing a rotating isograph. The correct way is to have a bottle like this. Inside you have a special cleaning uh, liquid from rotring. I will show you, I think I have something here. Search for it. Where is it? Okay. Where are we? Uh, this one. This is a cleaning fluid for technical pants. 100 milliliters, of course. How you use this? You fill a bottle with this thing, and then you drop the the nibs inside, and you let them there. You can reuse it. You, you don't need to, to wash because it doesn't matter that the the liquid get black like this one. 
because the, the amount of ink that we have is very small and will be diluted by the same the same product. So you can use it as many times as you wish. And then you put the, the rotating nibs there, you, you leave that thing. And a few hours later, you, you take them out and they are perfect, clean, and they work flawlessly. Because when you are working with this thing, you will not notice, but the ink will not flow exactly as they should. And the, the line will be wider than it should be because it's getting clogged. But uh, most of the comic book artists you see online or whatever, they don't use this one. They use the, the cheaper one, the microns, or whatever that is not refillable because they don't work on tracing paper. If they use those and work in tracing paper, the line, color, and precision of the line will not be good. They are working on normal sheet of paper, and they, I don't know if they refill, they are not refillable. They interchange it, they, they, they just replace them. But uh, in technical drawing, you use those ones. You don't use the other ones. This one gives you a lot more precision than the other ones. Anyone that had made some career on technical drawing knows what I'm talking about and about what a rotring isograph pen is. Also, you will uh, save a lot of money just buying rotring ink and using these ones. As you can see now, um, the correct way of using the things is, in fact, when you do technical drawing is just putting perpendicular to the paper and doing like this. When you are drawing, you can put angle like this, holding with three fingers. Uh, maybe when you use uh, another type of tool, you will be like more like this way, but with this one, it's better to be this way. Also remember to rotate them so you don't uh, use always the same part of the, you can rotate like this for not wear the, the same part of the technical pen. Of course, the larger the one you use, the larger is the line and the more control you, you have. The thinner one, the 0 0.2, I uh, use it mostly if I want to do some shading effects. Let me see if I can show you that. Like uh, doing textures. This is, you can see, is way more thin. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in. There you can see it. This is 0.18, this is 0 0.05. So you can see the difference. You have the colors to identify them and the numbers on there. So we always test them first on a sheet of paper to assure me that the ink is flowing. This one, the little ones, you cannot disassemble because you will broke, broke them. You have to just clean it, leaving them on the, and then you just shake them like this until the ink begins to flow. And gently on a, normal sheet of paper this is some pre preparation you have to do it every time my ink of course if you like you can ink with the deep pens there are awesome you have 
all kinds of different type of many many person like to use this one. You see on many artists, it's very thin. Uh, I personally from a matter of practicality and speed, I just use this one. Okay, now the ink is flowing, you can see. The thin, the lines are very thin, so you can do like shades, like if you were doing shades on uh, with a pencil. Uh, that's what I uh, I do when I want to the color is if you will put some color layer and I want that the drawing has already the the shadow or, the, or some dark and just apply there as you can see uh, it's like a gray but it's just lines so it's not the same doing that that feeling everything with something dark that would be using more if you're doing a just black and white type of drawing and um, on tracing paper, you can have very, uh, let me see if I can zoom this thing, a very good definition of lines that you will not have with another type of paper. Let me show you this thing. So you can see what I'm saying. You see here, there is a lot of definition there. You see that the lines are mm, with a lot more definition than if you were uh, inking on a paper that is soaking ink like mud, like a normal sheet of paper. Um, if you were doing, a, for example, a special sheet of paper for ink, the problem with sheet of normal with sheet of paper for ink is that if you work with pencil on those one, you can erase very well because they have like a special surface. So when you erase, um, when you use the pencils, you have to use very soft. So I I prefer to work the pencils on normal sheet of paper and then go straight on ink on a tracing paper. Also, tracing paper, when you put on the scanner, the light of the scanner will uh, go through much better than on a, another type of paper. So now I can do all the thinner details that I will normally do if I'm working on a tablet on digital. And this table of uh, line is thin as the one I can do on a, on a digital medium. So, well, because if you do that kind of hashing on a 0 0.3, uh, when you go this, will, you will see like, oh, this line is too big. I had to redo it. Uh, doesn't happen with the 0 0.18. It's thin enough uh, so you you don't have to to redo that work and if you put color over it it will be like the same effect of putting color and then hashing over it with the the digital instrument and um, so this way you can uh, gain some time of course, it's faster to draw this way than drawing on, on digital. Um.
Okay. And then I use, for example, the, the battle horse, the one that I use for most of the time thinking is this one, the 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is something in between. And uh, you can, you will see me using this thing in many of my videos. Uh, it's thinner, but you still have a lot of control. Um, um, you can fake a 0 0.5 or, or fake a 0 point, not so thin at the 0 0.18, but almost. And it, do it doesn't clog too much, so you can use it every day. See, most of the, and I think if I want a, a, a larger line, for example, I can fake the the line with variation passing over it many times like I saw that many famous comic book artists to do instead of using a flexible nib or brush pen they use a straight line like this type of instrument the micron or this one and they passed one over again to get uh, a wider line. This is mostly when they are inking for fun or doing some demos on, online. Then of course you have specialized guys that are ex expert in inking. They are professional inkers, they are the master of the line and they will use mostly uh, this type of <laughs> They will use the quill, this one, the quill, and they will be like uh, inking and using the quill like this, inverted, and and thinking like 20 seconds by each line, working in a very precise, well, this is the work of an inker. Uh, normally they use that on some special pages where they have they need to be like outstanding pages, amazing pages, etc. cetera. Uh, and consume a lot of time. It's amazing to see them working uh, because they pre-plan each line. They know it, maybe they, they will pick the, the, the nib, the pen like this, so they can not move with the, the joint of the hand, but with all the the arm, or putting a a finger on the the finger on the paper, like this, and be um, by moving the the whole arm, they will get more straight line. Also, when they are hashing, they 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 hash and they up at the end of the line, so you don't have that ugly point at the end. Well, there's a lot of techniques that you will be seeing on the many videos. Um, I personally prefer for thinking when I really need to do a very clean job, this type of liner, zero, zero. And dipping it or the same what rings that I'm using. You need to shake it, guarantee that the, the flow is constant and maybe clean it a little bit first of each session. So
Um, if I work straight with the ink over the trace tracing paper, I don't need to erase later. And when you digitalize it, you scan it, the lines are very black and with a lot of definition instead of being kind of gray and not really well defined and forcing you to redo them on the digital medium again. So this is most of what I, what I did doing on all those 80, 100 pages that I have left to to I'm using 0 0.3 because also when I'm doing the penciling, I'm using a 0 0.3 pencil. And I'm using 0 0.5 because I'm using a two millimeter pencil. And if I use a brush pen, it's to work when I'm using a, a wider, more expressive five millimeter, five point six, I think it's. Uh, pencil. So I try to match with the inking tools the the width of the the pencil that I that I was using. Another important thing when you draw is that the, the page is somehow perpendicular to your face because if you are drawing and the page is kind of on a flat surface, maybe if you don't believe me, try it. Your eye will be looking on the perspective of the, that flat surface and when you put it in perpendicular, the, the, the draw will be upscale. So you need to work on something that you can put in a at 30, 25 degree angle, so you can see exactly how the the shapes will look like. It's weird, but it happens. 
<laughs> that you draw and if you were looking like this, the the shape compress or not compress. You see now I have I I go again to the correct position. Then it is. For doing those type of hash that you, you see on many comic book artists does that they are like something like this hashes that they're not just lines things that they have some you have to do it with a, a brush pen to get that effect like like this brush pen doesn't leave a point at the end uh, they will give you a more type of you see for for hashing. If you, are, if you are drawing a face or something like that, that you need to have some more details, you can then move on the 0 0.3 and we work it over the, the tracing paper to clearly see what you want to ink and do all the correction you need. Then you can do it on digital, all the details on that face, and make the corrections that you need later. So you don't have to spend all the time on working on tiny spaces. Also, you can leave the can use uh, on the tracing paper, you can leave some hashes on pencil, you scan them, and when you go in digital, it will be like a kind of gray line layer that you can put color on it, over it, and it will be fine too. Yeah, no problem. Because if I just wish to put some shadow here, like this, I can do it. it doesn't. So that way, you are working on some part of ink, um, some effects, some part of on the on pencil. So, well, that's the way you You can ink this type of comics. I'll leave you now because uh, I have to have some hangout call with a collaborator of mine. So I will be doing another video later with more tips or whatever when I'm drawing. Thank you, stay in touch. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye.